Welcome to this week's devlog series. So what you can see here is the project that I have set up and worked on this week. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see a link to both my YouTube channel, Figma, and also the Scrum Board. A special thanks to Shannon Galloway for supporting me on Patreon and being the official sponsor of this video. And also if you scroll up to the top of this page, if there is anything you feel that you can improve on, be sure to make a pull request. And also if you find some issues, be sure to create some issues on the GitHub repository. So for Monday, I started setting up the Figma design. And this is just some very, very basic design just so I could wrap around and getting a understanding of what I would be creating. So what I always do is setting up the initial structure of the project. So that means setting up very, very basic design of each page. For example, I set up the home page, which is where I add water and also now the cups page where I can set the specific cup that I want to use. And then also, of course, the notification and login page. So what I also like to do is set up the initial structure of the database and you can do that in Figma or whatever you want. I just prefer to use Figma right now so I can easily explain it as we go on in this devlog series. And then I just refine the login page so it looks a bit better. So what I also like to try is to set up the colors in Figma so I could have my own color templates that I can use from. And I simply used, used a color that I wanted as a primary color and started to fill in the differences. So after I had some colors down, I could start adding those colors into the design. So first off, I used the 800 color for the buttons and also trying to set the color of what the home page or the drink page would look like. And all of this is just an initial sketch. I used to use those as a template and those will be also increased or better improved on as I go on in the series. So what I'm thinking on the notification page is that you can simply set a repeating notification at a specific time and then also turn that on and off. I also add some green so I can get some accent colors for the buttons instead. So I can use the blue as a primary color, for example, for that animation circle. So for Tuesday, I took a look at Firebase Auth so I could implement a Firebase user. So when we sign in, we are getting a Firebase user back and then navigate into the home screen. And this will also include the initial setup of the project. So then I just started to create a project and uploading that to GitHub repository. I simply removed all the boilerplate code so we could have a clean project. And then you started to implement in my root page. So this root page will be responsible for showing the sign in page or the home page. Then I just took a look at all of different packages that I want to use and I just implemented them with a comment so I can uncomment them later when I want to use them. So then I just take a look at the design for the login page and start adding the comments on what the components should be on this page. So all of my images for right now will be placeholder just so we could get this project started and going a bit faster. So the layout of the login page is very simple. I'm just using a column and then structuring each component on top of each other. So the first one will be the app icon and then I'm simply using a title and then subtitle and then I'm using a expanded. And the reason for expanded here is that I can just put each buttons on this expanded layout. And then of course at the bottom, I will start implementing the privacy policy text. And this text won't be clickable as of now. I'm just using that simple design to map it out. After the layout is complete, I start to implement Firebase off so I can have a Firebase project to this. So the next class I'm going to implement is the off class. And this off class will simply be the one providing with the Firebase user and the different methods I'm going to use with Firebase off. The naming convention on this is a bit weird as I named it off block and it's actually not a block, but that will be renamed later. And then I just make sure to use the provider to provide this off class. Then I simply use a stream builder to listen on the off state changes and then just return the home page if I'm logged in or the sign in page if I'm not logged in. And then I simply implement the sign in anonymously function so I can just press the button and sign into the page. Now we have a fully reactive page and we got a nice sign in structure. So for Wednesday, I then implemented Firestore and with this, when we sign in, we would create a user in the users collection, which would hold the last login and also how much water I'm going to drink every day. So now each Firebase user is connected to that node in the Firestore and we can check that with Ctrl F and see that the ID is matching. 
So the first task now is to implement Firestore. So we're simply going to create a branch for Firestore. And then we're simply going to take a look at implementing the Cloud Firestore plugin. So I had some multidex problems when trying to start this. So I just simply fixed that by going to the build Gradle and adding multidex true. And then I could start implementing a user class. And after I had created a user class, I could start creating my function, which would create the user in the database. And then I used implement my function, which is going to be called check and create user, which will simply check if the user exists in the Firestore. And if it doesn't, we will create that user. So what I also want to do is this method should be called each time we sign in. So I created a new page, which would be called homepage setup. And on init state, we would simply call the function for that. And then I just started to implement the user block, which would get the stream from the database of the user. And then we would stream that out to the UI. So my init function will simply call this function, which we're going to create now. So now we can start implementing the function get user stream, which will simply listen to that snapshot document in the database and just return that snapshot. And then of course, just creating the function which is going to update the last login date. So now we can simply use listen to this get user stream and then push that out to our own stream. Then we're just going to use provider to provide everything. And now when we get to the homepage setup, we can simply call the different functions we want to call. And then we can simply just listen to the out user and display error if we have error and also display the homepage if we have the data. And then when I was happy with that, I just created a pull request to merge that with develop. So I simply just created a pull request for this branch to merge out with develop. When that merge was complete, I simply removed that branch and then just cleaned up the project a bit. So for Thursday, I just start to implement the button navigation bar, which would use the change to different pages. And then also add in the pop-up menu button, which would be the sign out button. So what I did first was simply create a new branch and this branch would be responsible for the home page. So now I could just implement the home page design, which was going to just be a simple column just as before. And we're going to have the circle, which is just going to be where I can click on to add the different water amount that I'm going to drink. And then I just added a expanded at the bottom, which is just going to be all of the different water entries that I'm going to have. And then I just made some changes to the database, which is going to be changed a bit more later on. But this will simply be so we can have a stream for the max amount of water we're going to drink that day. After that was basically implemented, we could start to look at how we could implement the bottom navigation bar. So as it was quite a while ago that I implemented a bottom navigation bar, I actually just changed this up a bit to then later have its own page, which was going to hold the other pages. So I just made it so that this home page would then hold my different pages, which would be going to be the drink page, the cups page, and also the notification page. So I used to start to implement and start creating the drink page. And most of the drink page would just be copy the body of that design I created before. And as of now, my cups and notification page would simply be a container with a color so I could see the navigation working. After we got that working, I started to implement the pop-up menu button. And that was quite a while ago, I implemented that also. So it took quite a while to understand how I would do this the best way. But after I had that working, we could see that we would get a button up at the top. And also when we would press that later, we could sign out. And also after I did that, I also went ahead and cleaned up the project a bit. And that was all for Thursday. So I simply pushed that up to the repository and moved on to Friday. So Friday was pretty fun. We started to implement the reactiveness of listening to the water entries so we could have that to display on the app. And as this would be completely reactive, I could change things in the database, which would also change this in the app. Right now it was pretty simple. When I press the blue big circle, we would add 200 milliliter of water entry. And as you can see, if I would go and actually delete a document, that would actually change also in the app. So then what I first started doing was to implement the drink block. And this drink block would be responsible for the different functions we're going to do when we add some drinks or water to the database. So 
I simply made a new model for the drink and that would be pretty much the same thing as with the user block. We would have an amount and then also a date. Then I simply create a function which is going to listen to that collection of drinks. And then in the init function, we're simply going to listen to that drinks stream and then add that to our own list. And then we could simply map those out in the list view builder. And then I just push that to the repository and move down to the next thing. So I wanted a stream which was going to add all of those strings together so I could just listen to the total of mount. So I couldn't figure out a really good way of doing this. So if you have a good way of doing this, be sure to make a pull request or a issue with this. So I don't think my solution was the best, but I simply just created a loop function, which would then add all of those strings together that we could then return to the UI. So I didn't actually notice this when I was recording, but probably I was a bit frustrated for not getting this to work, so I zoomed out a bit. So it can be a bit hard to read the code now, but I will try to explain it as best as I can. So here's the stream that I was end up using, which was going to just loop those through and then just return that total value. So after that was implemented, we could go back to the UI and just listen to that. And we could see that we got that 500 out of 2500 milliliters, which was working as we wanted. So we could then go ahead and refine this list a bit. So the next thing I want to do is refine those list tiles to have a better color and didn't know really what I wanted. So I ended up just using a line at the bottom of each card. And then for the last step would simply be a drink water function, which was going to be called when we press that big blue circle. I simply push those changes up and then to move on to fix a small issue with the drink stream. As of now, it would just listen to all of the drinks in that collection. So we simply use two ways to then find those drinks for that specific day. Then I just made some finishing touches to the code and pushed that out and we were done with Friday. Saturday was the most fun day. We actually created the design for how the button would look like and we could also remove all of those entries and we had a nice animation for that water. So first off, I start to map out the container which was going to be the one that was holding that circle animation. After that, I used to start to implement the animation which was just going to start right away in the beginning and then I used to change that up a bit. And as I am pretty bad with math, I probably looked this up on the internet and I don't really remember the source, but you can probably find that somewhere. But this would simply be the one that I could give the total amount and also the percentage that we are done with. And that would then paint out the circle. So I actually got a bug which was just this square in the middle. And that was used because I changed the wrong variables with the math function. After I found out which one it was and fixed that, we could see that I would then get a simple circle with this blue color. Now I could simply give the animation value which was going to be the presented of the bar. So for then in the stream where we had the total value that we had in water, we could simply just call the animate to function. And one bug that I had is that I had this stream builder inside my animated builder, which would just cause it to rebuild endlessly. So I actually just switched those out in the position. After I had that working, I just started to clean up the products. We could have a bit more structure in it. So I pushed that up to then realize that the bottom is very, very poorly optimized in the way it looks. So right now, if I press the circle, it will actually be this inkwell in a square. So I started to try to implement a good way of doing this. I couldn't really find the good way that I wanted to, so I just started to implement a raised bottom, which used to use a circle shape. And then for the child of that, I used a container. And that container would be responsible for holding the animation circle. So as you can see, I was sitting quite a bit with this problem. So if you have a good way of fixing this or making this a bit better, be sure to create a pull request and or let me know in the comments also. So then everything was working correctly. So we just start to implement the animation curve, which was going to just be some kind of ease out curve. I pushed that commit up to then move on to this list view because I wanted to actually have a some kind of dismissible. So I just added a dismissible, which would just remove that entry from the database. 
If you like this devlog, be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. A special thanks to the patrons that supported me. And I'm sorry if this devlog was a bit unstructured. I will try to improve it on the next video, so let me know what I can do to improve the video down in the comments. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.